All right, good bless afternoon, everybody. Coming to you today really quickly with the uh, Bible study from 1 Timothy 4. But I want to read a verse for you first, and it comes from Genesis 12, 3. And it says, I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curse thee, and it shall in thee, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So those that curse you, God is going to curse them according to that scripture. And um, I want to go down to Psalms 7, verse 16. It says, His mischief shall return unto his own head, and his violent dealing shall come down on his own plate or pat. Another one from Psalms 7, 15. He made a pit and digged it, and fallen into the ditch which he made. So, and another one, Psalms 109, verse 17. As he loved cursing, so let it come unto him. As he delighteth not in blessing, so let it be far from him. You know, I just had a dealing with, um, I just had a dealing with this, with this chick, man. Um, you know, all of a sudden she spazzes out and, um, you know, we're praying together. We're fasting together. I don't know what type of demon is on this woman, but, <laughs> you know, you want to curse me just because you don't know how to conduct yourself as an adult. That's absolutely fine. That's absolutely fine. God has called me to peace. Any situation that promotes drama, I would never be a part of that. No, I would never be a part of that. Especially when, you know, I'm fasted and I pray with people. And once they get what they want, they'll go right back into sin. They'll go right back into disrespecting people. That's absolutely fine. From the scriptures that I just read, it will come back onto you. This is a promise from God. So watch how you treat people. Watch how you treat people because how you will reap what you sow. All right. I never mistreated this person. Um, they just immediately one day came at me wrong. And I, and I know what it is. I'm just not going to put it out here. I already know what it is. I know exactly what it is. All of a sudden, it goes to me. They want to mistreat me. And then they want to be mad when I say, hey, just go through the ministry contact. Because the thing is, my personal phone number, my personal email, that's why I switched the emails up. My personal email is getting full. Okay? So that's why I created a specific email for uh, this channel. So you guys use the Yahoo email from now on. Okay? Like my personal phone number, that's for people that can treat me with respect. And, you know, I'm not under you. Man is uh, the head of every man. Every, every woman is a man. All right. You're not going to run me. You know, we were supposed to be in a relationship. And all of a sudden you thought that you I was going to allow you to, to treat me any type of way. Oh, heck no. Mm -mm. I'm sorry. I ain't going to cuss you out. I'm just going to disappear. I'm just going to go on about my business. So it it is what it is. You you created this situation, young lady. You created this situation. You decided you weren't going to communicate, and that's absolutely fine. You don't have to. According to these scriptures, it's God's job to repay. So, 1 Timothy 4. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devil. So this is talking about, um, well, it was written then for now about how uh, people will give they will depart from the faith and um, kind of with the kind of with the uh, uh, young lady I was talking about um, you know they'll depart from the faith giving heed to seduce some spirits and doctrines of devil once they've gotten what they've gotten but they forget about the wrath of God verse 2 speaking lies in hypocrisy having their conscience seared with the hot iron forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats vegans which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth for every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving so you're not to refuse something if it be received with thanksgiving mainly meat for it is sanctified by the word of God in prayer again it shows you how uh, it's 
very important that you pray over your food and everything that, that you receive from people. Um, which is, which is I out here? <laughs> Matter of fact, that's, that's what that young lady's dealing with. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast attained. So you've attained the ministry of Jesus Christ by reading his word and good doctrine. Um, a lot of people choose not to follow doctrine, but they expect a godly outcome. Um, from the scriptures that we read in the conversation as a precursor to reading this, uh, this, this Bible study here, um, we understand that the curses will come onto those that choose to sow curses into others. When you choose to go after people um, who haven't wronged you, but have given you sound advice, um, which oftentimes people don't want to heed sound advice. They want to do what they want to do and expect a different outcome. And, you know, from the word of God, it doesn't operate like that. You know, when you go against the word of God or when you uh, clearly from these scriptures, when you uh, curse somebody or when you try to dig a pit for somebody, you shall definitely fall into that pit um, as well. But you shall also reap the seed that you sow. Remember, death and life is in the power of the tongue and he that loveth eateth of his fruit. So what you speak into what you speak out there is what you're going to eat. So you will reap what you put out there. But when you stick to sound doctrine, which is the word of God, we know the golden rule is to place no other God before him. Two, two golden rules. Place no other God before him. And it's also do unto others as you would have done unto yourself. A lot of people miss that, um, miss that chief principle in uh, Exodus 20, uh, the Ten Commandments, because they rather talk dirty or talk nasty and then wonder why they don't prosper. Well, that's why you don't prosper. You've given those demons uh, leeway. And uh, you won't have to come back to God on your own on that one. So verse 7. But refuse, pro but refuse profane in old wives' fable. So refuse profanity and folk tales. And exercise thyself rather unto godliness. Exercise yourself in godliness. Keep his word. Keep his word. Verse 8, for bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all exception, for therefore we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God who is the savior of all men, especially of those that believe. These things command and teach. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in truth, in purity. So verse 12, be the example. We're not supposed to be just readers of the word. We're supposed to be doers of the word. We're supposed to follow these words, follow these commandments and statutes. This is how we walk in true godliness versus a form of godliness where you um, were on TV or online or in the pulpit. These people look like they're God, like they're of God, but you peel back the layer and they're far from it. You know, they're in all types of witchcraft, fornication, uh, lies, deceit. Remember uh, Proverbs 6 16, the very first verse, it says, God hates a haughty tongue. These are seven, one of the seven things that God despises. God despises a liar. The next thing that he despises, sorry, the next thing that he despises is um, a heart that deviseth evil. I think that's the third thing. But he hates the wicked at heart. You know, you talking slick to somebody or, or you, oh, you, you, uh, you casting uh, curses at somebody just be, you know because you don't want to communicate or all, all of a sudden you hate them now. <laughs> all of a sudden you hate them. You know, when God had that person helping you out and, and blessing you, you know, all of, a, all of a sudden, oh, wow, I don't like you. I don't want to da-da-da. Well, okay, cool then. 
then it should be no problem for you not to talk to that person. It should be no problem for you not to message them at 3 a.m. Because when you're working for God, you don't have time to waste on people that would prefer to play games. Because there's too much work to be done. All right, if the person's going to play games, put them out of your life and get them out of your way. They're only going to slow you down because they think that they are higher than God in your life. And you need to show them differently. And go on, go on, move them to the side. Go ahead and move them to the side. Say, hey, you need prayer. You need whatever, whatever your calling is. You know, if you do prayer, fasting, uh, deliverance, whatever that is. Whatever you're calling, if you need this, yo, I'm still available for that. Personally, I can't mess with you because you are going to sabotage my walk with God. Because for some reason, you think that you're higher than him. And that would never be the point. So at some point, you got to make a decision when you're following Jesus. You're going to put him first or you're going to put somebody who don't even matter. <laughs> who talks because I don't know what higher than him. You got to choose, though. All right. So verse 13, till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. So till I come, study. Till the Messiah comes back, study. All right. Always be in attendance and reading. Verse 14, neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy with the lying on of hands of the presbytery. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that rear thee. So take heed to yourself. Always check your heart and uh, take heed to the doctrine, which is the word of God. Continue in both of these. For in doing this, you not only save yourself, but you also save those that hear thee by doing. So, that is the Bible study for today, uh, 1 Timothy 1-4. through And I pray that the scriptures at the beginning um, helped you guys out. And I pray that um, my brief explanation of my experience gave you guys a bit more knowledge and led you all a bit more and how important it is to stay with the word of God. Um, this person actually thought that they would be able to, um, you know, <laughs> disrespect me and go against God and that God isn't going to repay them. Hey, I've seen God repay people that have done much worse to me. You ain't no exception. You really not. And, you know, for anybody else that think that they're going to be, um, that I'm going to stick around them when they disrespect me, absolutely not. Back up and let God handle you. That's how I fight my battles now. I'm going to back up and let God handle you. I don't cuss nobody out. I just remove myself. So, and I, I advise you guys as followers of Christ, hey, to do the same. Give people the word of God as he leads you. Um, when they start getting disrespectful. And uh, thinking that they're going to talk to you any type of way, just just leave them. Leave them. Give them these scriptures right here, Genesis 12, 3. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee. Genesis Psalms 109, 17. And he loved cursing, so let it come unto him, as he delight not in blessing, in blessing so let it be far from him. Psalms 7, 15. He made a pit and diggeth it. And fall into the ditch which he made. So when they dig a pit for your destruction, God would allow them to fall into it. Psalm seven verse sixteen: His mischief shall return unto his upon his own head. So that that nastiness that they done to you is going to return right back to them. Why? Because right now those spirits got the legal right. Oh hey, you didn't you didn't treat you didn't love thy neighbor as you love thyself. They're going to go to God and say, hey, this person broke a commandment. Now we got the right to torment their life. So, like, people think that the uh, that the wrath of God just doesn't fall upon them until it actually comes upon them for disrespecting other people. So, 
you guys have a uh, blessed day. I hope you guys got something out of this uh, th this quick Bible study and the uh, preceding scriptures before it and after. And I'll put these scriptures down in the uh, in the description box. It's going to be titled "Those That Curse You," and these are the laws that they are completing for those that curse them. And they also completing the law in Deuteronomy twenty eight fifteen through twenty three, I believe. So it's like you know these people that curse you. Or that want to uh, just attack you out of the blue. They got a lot of things coming for them. Alright, so you guys have a blessed one. I'll catch you on the next one.